it's not if corruption exists or not, the question, it's there. It's just that when you know about it, you can start finding solutions, and that's where you get, you, and you advance. Because, you know, um, as citizens, just citizens, we, are, we all have the same concern uh, regarding our public institution and politicians. We want to have to be able to trust them, and it's often a trust issue. We have to want to be able to trust that they are working in the best interest of the society. And we want to make sure that they are shielded from undue influence of all sorts. And it is essential to keep working towards uh, that goal. And every time I have uh, a, the occasion, the opportunity to speak, all I say is that you have to keep the conversation going because the moment you think that you're done or the moment you look away, that's the moment it all starts all over again and it gains ground. So it's not, I don't, I, I'm not making it like a business story, but it's just like when we talk about it like we do today, it's the way to keep it alive and to be aware. And that's what we did for four years, very painfully, very publicly. We exposed our situation and ourselves, I would say, to the world now. But we gained a lot by doing this. Uh, and we did that for four years with the Commission Charbonneau. And like you're doing today, we also had to learn from other experiences. And we had to look elsewhere for answers and ways to analyze these situations. Uh, we had an extensive research department at the Commission Charbonneau. Of, I would say that at the height of the commission, 125 persons were working on that on that topic with us. Uh, us, the persons, the prosecutors, and the commissioners were public. Was like we were just like the tip of the iceberg. We, there was a full body of uh, uh, investigators, analysts, experts, and researchers working to help us. Uh, move towards that, uh, that, move through that mandate. And we had to gather information and opinions from other public inquiries as well uh, on similar subjects that we were facing and that helped us forge a understanding of uh, the situations that we analyzed and we came about and maybe find solutions. Are they the best solutions? We'll see over time, but that's what we thought that we should move. that political financing creates a big vulner uh, vulnerability for our elective and it's, and it's a way for the private sector to inquire influence and leverage. Uh, it's an, in an ideal world, uh, you should move away from private foundings, but I mean, it's not possible to do entirely. In Quebec, we even raised the bar on public financing. We have a, a pro rata that you could buy by number of votes that you get, you get a certain amount of money. Uh, we raised the bar since the commission because you can, but it's hard to entirely um, eliminate all sorts of uh, public found, uh, uh, private funding for this type of situation. But and like I said, in an ideal world, we should we should ban that because to make sure that that we shield our politicians from this kind of undue influence in order to avoid any type of conflicts of interest or appearance of conflicts of interest, even if it's, it's not there. Uh, that's the way to, to chip at, at the public trust. If you think that the politician awards a contract who pushes towards a, a awarding of contract to a company because this company is financing him, even if in fact the, all the rules were followed. I mean, you, there's a breach in the trust, and then from there, it's like a spiraling down. Uh, we've been there, believe me. And, and you avoid any kind of, uh, of payback or, or pressure to have this payback done. So, and our work for four years revealed that it was a legitimate concern of, our, of ours. So that is something else if you take away from today, it's something that you should, you should be concerned about. That companies were giving to, always giving more to the party in power, and, but always giving to both parties. So don't tell me it's for political reasons or for, for because you believe in them. Because, I mean, uh, the same engineering firm or construction companies were always giving to both parties, but always a little bit more to the party uh, in power. And, when, and we had a third party in 2005 where 
it looked like it, it would come ahead and maybe have a chance of, of being elected or grab the power and it was a peak in the donation. So this is this is what and, and, and we did like we examined it for fifteen years and it was going on for fifteen years so and nobody will convince me that a business is not giving money for business reasons. So if you are convinced of that, I mean I don't know what all your arguments are. There also in the report, there were many industries that seemed particular, especially in the public procurement uh, section of the report, uh, such as the paving industry. Yeah. And um, or can you speak to a few well, of the industries? I'm not saying, well, I, can, I, can, I can't say it's because of all the evidence there, but, the, but our mandate was to examine these situations. So it's a little bit, yeah, it's not, it's not fair to, to pretend that it's in the, this industry is more rotten, corrupted than other. But I think all, all public uh, procurement system, all every time you have public money, you have to look into it. But I would say yes, in pavement and road constructions, it, it was like bad. But that was amended to look into that. So I mean, but we had allegations that we didn't require because we, we couldn't about the uh, informatic uh, computers, the uh, déneigement for the snow or removal. Uh, so every time you have money or big big uh, budget for public contracts, I mean, look into that. That's one, one uh, piece of information from the international system, which is interesting, is that the um, OECD, the uh, Organization for Economic uh, Development and Cooperation, finds that, I think, it's, uh, 50, over 50% 50 of uh, corruption happens when there are large in, in public procurement, yeah. because the contracts are so large, and so that's one of the places to look uh, when you're trying to detect corruption. That's where the money is. So. Right. So follow the money. Follow the money. Right. I, said, uh, I was paying as a citizen 30% more than I should pay for my road. Roads that believe me in Quebec, they're bad. So, <laughs> so I don't know what I was giving money for. So my taxes go up. I don't have enough. I don't have uh, as much service as I, I want to have in other areas. So it's not a victimless crime, it's like we're all victims and that's a notion that we have to move away from. Public interest is our interest.